What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my little Subaru only shop here in Northern California. Thank you so much for checking out the video. In today's video, we're gonna continue our deep dive into coolant flow through Subaru engines. And we're taking a closer look at how the reverse cooling mod kits that are currently on the market are actually trying to address the overheating problems for cylinder number four. In my first couple videos, we actually went to the whiteboard and we walked through how coolant flows through these engines. And then I grabbed my camera and we headed over to my short block and actually showed you guys how coolant flows through the water pump and through all the ports and passages into that short block. And then in the next video, we actually took a deep dive into coolant flow through the heads and I actually used my light to shine into those coolant ports behind the combustion chambers. That way you guys get a better idea of how the coolant flows in those chambers. In this video, we're gonna continue this discussion, but I'm actually gonna make something called a flow net or flow field. And that will actually give you guys a better idea about how the flow paths develop inside these heads and how and why we might have preferential flow around that number two cylinder and less flow around the number four cylinder. I think it's gonna be a really interesting video and I hope you guys will like it. Thanks again for checking out the channel, guys. My name's Luke and this is a super only show. my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. Okay guys, this is gonna be interesting. I'm actually gonna use one of these head gaskets. I'm gonna use that as an outline for the coolant chambers and for the combustion chamber. And I've actually just got one of these clear transparencies. I'm gonna use this sucker to outline the image. And then on that, I'm gonna go ahead and actually draw flow lines and equipotential lines. And I'm gonna explain what those are when I get to that point. Okay, first thing I'll do is I'll put this transparency down. I'll go ahead and tape it in place. That way I don't have to worry about it moving. All right, and then I'll go ahead and grab that head gasket. I'm gonna set that down. I'm gonna use this as a template. Now, I know this is a head gasket and not the cylinder head. I know this isn't the exact location for all the ports inside the cylinder head, but this is gonna be a really nice approximation of, of where all the ports are in that cylinder head. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this as a template, a couple pieces of tape down, and then grab my Sharpie and go ahead and mark it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark everything just using the head gasket as a template. And I'll go ahead and get the internal combustion chambers. And continue to trace out where the coolant passages are on this head gasket. We'll trace out exactly where the coolant flows. Okay, now what do I got here? This is definitely a decent outline of that head gasket. And as you can see, I got kind of the chambers of where the coolant can flow. I got the, this is actually your combustion chamber. Coolant is entering these ports, flowing through the head, and then exiting out these ports. But what's controlling that is where the coolant enters in the short block and where the coolant exits in the short block. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark those locations on this figure next. Okay, for these, I'm gonna go back over here to the engine. I'm gonna kind of lay it down here on top of the short block. I can kind of see exactly where that coolant enters. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that light. I still have the plug removed on the bottom of the short block and I can put that light right in where the coolant is entering. And then I can go ahead and mark on this figure exactly where this port is. And I'll go ahead and do the same on the top where the coolant exits. I'll just kind of mark on the figure exactly where I know that port is exiting. Okay, we'll go ahead and take this back over to the workshop bench. Okay, so this is where that port is entering the short block underneath the head gasket and the cylinder head. So this is gonna be the highest pressure point. Even though it's filling that whole chamber in that short block, the fact that the coolant is entering over here and it's actually deflecting off that cylinder wall, this is actually gonna be the highest pressure point for all the coolant that's going through these little kidney-shaped passages through the head gasket and into the head. So we're gonna call this our highest pressure point. I'll put a bull arrow. and a P for pressure. And then over here, that's where it's exiting the short block. So that's gonna be the lowest pressure point. So I'll put a, a P and a down arrow for low pressure. So we basically have coolant coming into the head from these bottom ports, like we've talked about earlier in the video, and we have coolant passing through the head and then exiting on the top half of the head, going back into the short block. 
So I'm gonna draw little arrows kind of coming out of this port, this little kidney shape slot. And I'm gonna draw little arrows going in to this guy. So the flow is going in to these ports. It's a lot of arrows. I think you guys get the point with the arrows. And what actually happens is you actually have something that calls flow lines develop. And what that is, is that from every point that's coming out of this little shape, it's gonna to wanna to go through this passage and then exit over here. And it's gonna kinda of look like this. It's gonna be a nice, smooth path. Now there'll be some turbulence. They'll kinda of go in nice, smooth flow lines. And these flow paths come out of this like little port perpendicular. And then they flow, and they flow, and I know there's gonna be some different obstructions in there. This is the general idea of how the coolant is going inside that head. All right, and eventually you get something that looks like this. And this is a really rough, crude sketch of the flow paths that might be taking place inside that head. And I think the ports are a little bit constrained and they're a little bit smaller than this, quite a bit. This is actually two-dimensional, not three-dimensional flow. You're looking at a 2D flow field is what it's actually called. And these are actually called flow lines. And the arrows are kind of showing the general flow field. And what this basically shows is how coolant is entering through these lower kidney slots down here. And it's entering the head and it's making its way through preferential flow paths that are based on pressure differentials. So basically, each one of these points where the coolant enters the head is gonna to wanna to go to the point where it can exit the head at the lowest pressure. So basically, this flow path right here will be exiting right here or wherever the lowest pressure point is. This is basically an even symmetrical flow field. And that would be if we had even pressures coming in the bottom and even pressures going out the top. But that's not actually what's taking place. If you recall, we actually have high pressure right here and we have low pressure right here. So what that means is you're actually gonna have a skewed flow field. You're gonna have a flow field that actually goes preferential from this point right here where the high pressure is to that point right there where the low pressure point is. So you're gonna have a lot stronger flow paths between these two points, which means all the flow around here and all the flow around here on this cylinder. And what you're actually looking at is over here, this is gonna be cylinder number two, and this is gonna be cylinder number four. So when you consider that preferential flow path from the high pressure point to the low pressure point, you can see really clearly the cylinder number two is definitely gonna have a whole lot more coolant circulating around it. And as a matter of fact, cylinder number four is gonna have very little coolant circulating all the way around it. There's gonna be a lot of coolant flowing on this side of cylinder number four, but really down over here on this side of cylinder four, you're gonna have very little coolant flow because you have this preferential path going from here to here. Now what those reverse cooling mod kits do is they actually add a negative point right here or they let the coolant exit the back of the head and they tie that into the heater core circuit which gets sucked by the water pump and gets recirculated. So they actually induce a negative pressure point right here just like we have up here which means you actually start getting flow paths from this point and from this point and a slight flow paths from here and from here which means you're starting to pull a lot more coolant over to that number four cylinder head. It also means that if there's a lot of stagnant flow over here and the fact that there's so much flow going from here and here means it's very possible that there's very little flow coming from here and very little flow over here and there might be a lot of stagnant coolant that just sits there and gets baked and absorbs a lot of heat that gets built up in cylinder number four. So I think the fact that they're creating this exit port in the back of cylinder number four, and I'll mark that right now, now you're actually gonna induce flow to the back of cell number four. You're gonna get rid of any stagnant coolant that may have been sitting there and a lot better control of the temperature that develops in cell number four. And that is key because like I said earlier, cell number four seems to be the Achilles heel for a lot of piston damage in these Subaru engines. All right guys, a little bit of reflection. This kind of gives you a 3D representation of how that flow field might be occurring inside those heads. Right here, you have the inlet port, and that's where the highest pressures are. So you're gonna have the highest pressures coming out of these two slots into the head. And then from there, you're gonna have fluid that creates these preferential flow paths, kind of like what you're seeing here. Now remember, the flow field you're looking at right here would be for a completely symmetrical system with equal pressure at all four slots and equal pressure at the top, and that's not the case. In reality, this flow paths will look a little bit different. There's gonna be really strong flow paths right to the middle going from this point over to that point. Maybe something you guys have never seen. It's not something I've ever seen. I think it's kind of cool. 
Hopefully that flow field or that flow net gave you guys a better idea about how the flow paths might develop inside these heads under operating conditions. I'm actually going to pause right here for today guys, but in the next video I'm actually going to compare two of the most popular reverse cooling mod kits on the market and I'm going to go ahead and install one of them on the short block, that way you guys can see exactly how these reverse cooling mod kits are installed on the engine with no obstructions in the way. Thank you so much for checking out the video guys, if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a like or copy and paste the link and share it with your friends in the Subaru community. Thanks again for watching the video guys, I really appreciate it. My name's Luke, this is the Subaru Only Show, until next time guys, later! Thanks again for watching this video guys. As you guys know, I'm a diehard Subaru enthusiast. And I've also had the opportunity to be involved in motorsports for over two decades now. But I'm also a professional hydrogeologist. And I've actually spent years in laboratories performing experiments where I studied the flow of fluids using the properties of physics and fluid mechanics. In these YouTube videos, I'm actually able to combine my experience from the laboratories and all the research I've done with my experience from all the motorsport series I've been involved in and my passion for Subarus. If you have any professional inquiries about Subaru related R&D or digital marketing and media, you can contact me at SubaruOnlyShop at gmail.com. Or if you work in private industry or for a public municipality and you'd like to contact me for professional environmental or engineering and design services, you can review my professional academic background, my professional research experience, and my professional consulting experience on LinkedIn. Just go ahead and sign into LinkedIn and look for Luke Shannon and then type TRC. That's the company I currently work for. And if you type Luke Shannon and TRC, I'm the only person that's going to come up. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to hear from you soon.